having the Meet the Maker event today with Vittoria, and then next weekend we'll have the Arte Vita trunk show. It's going to be October 1st through 3rd. It is an in-store event, so please reach out to us and make an appointment if you'd like to come and see any of the jewelry. Um, if you don't live in the Ann Arbor area, you can certainly get in touch with us through email, through our website, um, you can give us a call, we can do a, a Zoom or some kind of other virtual meeting with you um, to help you enjoy the trunk show as well, even if you're, even if you're not local. <laughs> So hopefully Victoria will join us again in just a moment and then we can take a look at more of her beautiful jewelry. <laughs> yeah, we just got a nice shout out from Kara McLaughlin. <laughs> she loves our Vita jewelry. <laughs> I like to say about Arte Vita that there's every price point and every range of bling you could possibly want. <laughs> from um, beautiful everyday blue lace agate earrings which are in sterling silver and they're hand wire wrapped. These are just $20. To something really luxurious for a special occasion like this beautiful Tahitian pearl and South Sea pearl um, necklace that Victoria made. Okay. Hey, sorry about that. We had some technical difficulty. <laughs> That's okay. So, so you were you showed us your beekeeper collection and your secret garden collection. What's next? What's another collection that you have? So the next one that I have up is my natural wonders collection. This is inspired by all of the amazing things in nature that pretty much don't fall <laughs> to the beekeepers or the secret garden. Some, some cases I'm inspired by the stones themselves that are always unique. One of the things that I wanted to showcase in talking about the National Wonders Collection is some of the really incredible agates and things that can be found and hand wired. Margaret showed you at the beginning a pair of blue lace agate earrings. These are Botswana agate earrings and no two stones are alike. So even the pairs are slightly different. One of my favorite things to do is buy strands of stones, beads, and then sit and separate them and make pairs and make layouts. It's so much fun. Ocean Jasper is another super unique stone where again, each and every one is a little bit different. So you can either match them in pattern or match them in color or not even match them at all. <laughs> so that is um, some of your more affordable bling. What price point are your agate earrings at? So my agate earrings start at $15 for the little icicle earrings, these guys, which are a very sweet, delicate earring that can be worn by almost anybody in almost any situation. These guys in Agate and also in um, Amazon, I start at $15 and go up to, I don't think I have anything that's more than $30. That's a Natural Wonders hand wrapped earring. I have these guys that are Tiger Iron. So that's the parent stone of Tiger Iron and it has the chatoyancy and it looks like you're looking at a sunset or a the of them. I did also, on special request, bring two really show-stopping Natural Wonders pieces. The first one is an ombre sapphire, orange sapphire eternity Are you there, band. Between? This guy has over 12 K for somebody who doesn't need to use their hands, but enjoys having some sparkle favorites. And it pairs very well with this natural color Burmese spinel and brown diamond ring, which again is a natural wonder in and of itself.
So Victoria um, is our manager, our general manager. She's one of our sales staff. She's also one of our designers here on staff at Abracadabra. And uh, she also has her own design company called Arte Vita, which means art for life. Um, and she has uh, some really fabulous pieces at every price level from really affordable, uh, you know, $15 sterling silver, hand wire wrapped agate earrings to, um, you know, fabulous special occasion pieces <laughs> that are in the thousands of dollars. Um, so for example, today I have on one of her fabulous pearl necklaces. This is, um, uh, excuse me, South Sea and Tahitian pearls um, with <laughs> a white gold clasp. And then I also have these beautiful 14 karat yellow gold earrings on. These are set with cognac diamonds. And these are in the $4,000 price range. So everything in between. Okay, so we're going to go live with her again and see if this goes better. Hi, Victoria. <laughs> Let's try this again. Yeah, we're on a different device this time. Um, so okay. hopefully that goes better. Wonderful. Where would you like to pick up or go back to or start from? Um, shall we just start again? <laughs> sure. Let's start again. Okay, very good. Um, so you have had a long history in the jewelry industry. Um, even though you're a mere last of 20, you've been working in the jewelry industry for years now. Um, how did you first get into making jewelry? So I often joke that I started making jewelry when I could put macaroni on a shoestring, and it's not really a joke. That's pretty much when I started. I have loved making three-dimensional objects and jewelry objects since I was very small, uh, a lot of times making things for my mom because I didn't quite think that what she had or in her collection was adequate. <laughs> um, I had the good fortune of going to a middle school that was across the street from a beading store. And so when I was in middle school, I spent a lot of time after school there learning how to bead from the lovely ladies who who worked there and who hung out there. Um, I taught myself a lot from reading books, doing the precious metal clay, the FEMO, prod, things like that. Anything that I thought that I could figure out for myself. I also had the for good fortune of going to a high school that offered jewelry making classes. So mm -hmm. Pioneer High School had silver jewelry classes and that's started. Um, I should add that I think I've had my business license since approximately 1998, where I was hustling beaded necklaces at the Carytown Farmer's Market. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so it's, it's just always been your passion. It has. It has always been my passion. Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned a little bit of your training um, in your formative years. Um, what other training have you had? So besides two semesters of silver jewelry in high school, I took two semesters of jewelry making in college. We had a small workshop and I learned some additional skills like casting and fooled around with a lot of a lot of things that I thought that I could teach myself. And after graduating with a Bachelor of Fine Arts, I moved to New York City and they took a bench jewelers training course. So I have trained on the bench with all of the skills that many jewelers then go on to develop. And my paying gig career took me in the administrative side of things. So I did not get to practice those skills as much as I would have liked, but I have learned how to do pretty much all the things. <laughs> yeah, all the things and all the different facets of the industry. Correct. Um, so you mentioned that you moved to New York, and how long did you live there again? I lived there for 12 and a half years. Mm -hmm. And you worked in the Diamond District, correct? That's, that's correct. I worked, I kind of worked my way uptown. <laughs> Uh, the school that I went to was on 31st Street, and my first position in a fashion jewelry workshop was on 36th Street, and then I moved into a production manager position in a manufacturing workshop on 37th, and then the next stop was 47th Street, where I worked for a gentleman who was an independent designer who had a booth in one of the 
um, exchanges on 47th Street. And I learned a lot about how business got done on 47th Street and how an independent person who ne didn't necessarily have every skill set could still have a thriving business and still create the things that they imagined working for him. And then I moved up to an inventory manager position for a cultured pearl company and beyond that as well. So in all those different positions over the 12 years, is there one that you think was most influential to your career? There most certainly was. I worked for a company called Provocative Gems and I was hired on as their inventory manager at the time they had never had an inventory manager. So we learned a lot of things together and I consider that kind of my career making position. I learned about cultured pearls, natural pearls, estate jewelry, vintage diamonds, how to work with vendors, how to work with salespeople, how to work with production jewelers, as well as liaising both nationally and internationally with auction houses. And everything that I've done since then has been informed in many ways by things that I learned in that position. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a very valuable experience. It most certainly was. <laughs> and when did you start Arte Vita? Uh, so I named it Arte Vita in approximately 2004 as a play on my, my own name with two T's and also my feeling that art, that jewelry is wearable art. It's mm -hmm. art that not only do you, the owner and the wearer of the jewelry get to enjoy, but everybody else who sees you gets to enjoy it as well. And mm -hmm. some people just seeing a piece of jewelry that they like and in others getting to see somebody enjoying the jewelry that they're wearing. And so it's really the one piece of art that can be integrated completely into someone's life. So mm -hmm. Art for Life, Arte Vita came about in approximately 2004. As I said, I've had my business license since 1998. Um, I kind of marked the advent of the official business of two, as 2010 when I, was, when I was able to convince somebody to give me a business bank account. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and you have a long history with Abra, too. How did you find your way here? So I first found Abra and met Stephen during art fair one summer when I was in college. And my mother and I were looking around at, at all the vendors. And I very vividly remember that in the window at Abra, there was a little mini jeweler's bench. And propped in that bench was a rainbow ring. And I dragged my mom in. She knew that there was a rainbow. We had to go see it. <laughs> and I met Stephen. And Stephen told us, well, that, that is a really cool ring. I really like that it's a spectrum. But if I made it again, I would make it all in sapphires. And that is when I learned that sapphires come in every color of the rainbow, something that I enjoy telling people to this day. Mm -hmm. It's my birthstone as well. So my mom knew that she had to do something about that. She circled back and had a rainbow sapphire ring made for me. But that day and subsequent visits, Stephen showed me the shop, showed me his stone collection, told me about his history, how he started, taught, taught himself and started his business. And it was incredibly inspiring to me to see that somebody else had done what I wanted to do and helped give me the push that I wanted to, that I needed to go forward and, and move to New York and start my own business. I often also joke that if Stephen had been hiring when I graduated from university, a job at Abra is the only thing that would have kept me from moving to New York City. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can all say it's for the best that he didn't have a position then, but now that I'm back and I finally have my job at Abra. <laughs> you have your forever home now. I have my forever <laughs> home, absolutely. <laughs> and do you have that rainbow sapphire ring on today? I do. I wear it every day. It was a 21st birthday slash university graduation gift because I lost my high school class ring and I rarely without it. Beautiful. So Arte Vita has several different design lines and I, stand, I understand that each design line is connected to something that's important in your life, but also um, contributes to some different charities that, that are near and dear to your heart. Is that correct? Yeah. 
<laughs> That's correct. I have six jewelry lines, uh, which are inspired by things that are, that are important and special to me. And for each of those lines, I have also selected a charity to which to donate a portion of the proceeds from each sale. So, so jewelry with a meaning. <laughs> jewelry with a purpose. Um, I have recently coined the phrase bespoke fine jewelry with a conscience, hmm. which I hope rings true. <laughs> Well, let's see some of your lines. Wonderful, which, where would you like to start? Um, let's start with your beekeeper collection. Wonderful, I'm wearing a beekeeper necklace. So the beekeeper collection donates to the Honeybee Conservancy to help our wonderful bees. And it's very much inspired, not just by bees that I think are absolutely adorable, but by some mm -hmm. of the geometry that is found in their hives, in their honeycombs, and in nature in general. I've made a honeycomb earring, which has a nat have natural color yellow diamond centers surrounded by a hexagon shaped halo. And this just reminds me of honey in a honeycomb, which mm -hmm. I really love. And then not to be left out, I also have the honeybee earrings, which are 18 karat yellow gold with galaxy diamonds that look like crystallized honey for the bodies and little diamond studded wings. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, you use the phrase galaxy diamonds. What do you mean by that? So galaxy diamonds is a term that I like to use that refers to highly included diamonds. I don't like calling them highly included. That sounds like a negative thing. There are galaxies within these stones. All of these inclusions lend personality and character and real uniqueness and beauty to the stones. And I'm really glad that they're starting to get their day in the, in the sun, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, they are all very unique and eye-catching. The inclusions themselves are what make them beautiful. Absolutely. Now, there are some ugly diamonds. Um, but... <laughs> But I haven't, I haven't met many of them in my career. <laughs> They're definitely much more interesting and also much more affordable than your standard kind of perfect, colorless, round, brilliant diamond, which those can have characters as well, but I, I don't find them nearly as engaging or as exciting as some of the galaxy stones that I've had the luck mm -hmm. of getting to spend time with. Yeah. Um, do you have any other items from the beekeeper collection? Aside from the necklace that I'm wearing, which has the yeah, honey, the the honey bee, the honeycomb hollow bead. This is a hollow bead. Um, it has approximately 250 diamonds in it, <laughs> <laughs> and and the necklace is a 32 inch chain that has both rustic hexagon diamonds and round brilliance in it in stations. And so they're sold separately, but I designed them to be worn together. <laughs> beautiful you. I like that you mentioned the thing that that you find interesting and inspirational about bees is their natural use of geometry you know we hear a lot about bees lately and we hear about um, protecting them because they're our pollinators um, so it's just interesting to me that you liked that um, the way that they construct things and that that inspires you to construct your jewelry it is it's it I mean, everything has to be constructed from zero up <laughs> and bees, honeycombs, wasps. It's really, it's really fascinating. I've always found it fascinating. Um, and that geometry and studying art history and hearing, learning about churches that were built in the middle ages. And before you hear a lot about sacred geometry mm -hmm. and as somebody who loves nature that's what I feel like is, is kind of sacred geometry to me. The mm -hmm. geometry of the petals of a flower, the symmetry of a leaf, the way that an animal or an insect constructs its home mm -hmm. in, in such amazing precision just boggles my mind mm -hmm. because I can't even do it with a ruler. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about your secret garden collection, which is somewhat related to the beekeeper. 
That's correct. The Secret Garden Collection supports another very important pollinator, butterflies, the Butterfly, butterfly Conservation, which is an English charity that works to educate and save butterfly habitats and is headed by David Attenborough. I have to admit, I'm a little bit of a fangirl. <laughs> <laughs> and that's inspired by flowers and leaves and, and other very natural things, such as the lotus flower or the morning glory, which are two of the flowers that I really have taken hold of in my designing, making both pendants and rings that feature both of those flowers. The newest piece that I have that will be going live on Abra's website on October 1st and will be available to be seen in person at the trunk show is this Victorian revival ring with a party color sapphire. And this guy has leaves on the sides and this has this beautiful stone that almost looks like it's tie dyed. You have to come and see it in person and really see it from the back to see the blue and the green swirl together to create what we call peacock stone. Mm -hmm. and this design I call a revival ring because I actually found a broken mounting in a scrap bin on 47th Street and my friends pulled together their, their knowledge and their resources to help me reconstruct it. We did a three-dimensional scan to reconstruct the ring in CAD to be able to make new models that are the same design, which is why I call it a revival. I've been able mm -hmm. to save this beautiful design and recreate it with modern post-consumer recycled precious metals and ethically sourced stones. Yeah, that is really an exceptional stone. Um, you got to see it in person to really, to really see um, how beautiful it is. <laughs> Um, what else do you have from the Secret Garden Collection? So from the Secret Garden Collection, I actually have another piece that is not yet completed. It is a morning goy slide pendant with a rose cut purple sapphire. For those of you who saw Abra's post a few days ago with the yellow sapphire lotus and the yellow diamond morning glory, and you'd like that, you should definitely come and take a look at the newest iteration. It will... It has been designed to be worn on a sapphire and diamond station necklace. So I will be exhibiting those two items together, but it is not quite done. So I don't have it to show off today. <laughs> so a couple of little teasers for you. Um, we are having a trunk show with Vittoria and her Arte Vita design line on October 1st through 3rd. It'll be in store. Um, so please make an appointment. Um, if you'd like to come and see her new designs, try them on, get some some styling advice, and, and you can even work one-on-one -on -one with Victoria to make a, a special design with her. Um, please uh, reach out to us for an appointment. We're, we're doing that so that we can keep our numbers in the floor low and keep everyone safe. And if you don't want to come in or you don't live in the area, you can also reach out to us on Instagram, email. You can call us. We'll We'll get you some bling in your life, no matter where you are. <laughs> Absolutely. And if you do come to the trunk show or you shop on the website during the trunk show, I am doubling my charitable contributions. So anything purchased in store during the trunk show or purchased online through the end of the day, Monday, October 5th, I will double the contribution that I'm making from those items. <laughs> Wonderful. So let's hear about another line of yours and what it contributes to. Tell us about the nightlife line. So the Nightlife line contributes to Bat Conservation International. I grew up exploring the great outdoors, which also included exploring underground. So I've done a lot of cave exploration and bats are a synonymous with caves. I think a lot of people associate them. Bats are incredible animals. In some cultures, they're considered to be good luck. Here in Michigan, I think we appreciate them most for their ability to eat mosquitoes and other insects that that can be quite pesky and also can carry diseases in mm -hmm. other parts of the world bats are also major pollinators and seed dispersers in mm -hmm. south and central america there are lots of night blooming flowers from which bats are the pollinators the cacao plant the yucca and also banana all have night blooming flowers that are pollinated by bats so chocolate tequila bananas i think we can all agree that keeping those things going are good. Mm -hmm. um, in other places, things like flying foxes that eat fruit also do a great job of dispersing seeds. Mm -hmm. So a lot of misconceptions about bats 
have led to them not being treated very well. And mm -hmm. I would love to change people's perceptions of that and support people who are doing research into, into conserving their habitats. Mm -hmm. So not only are bats nightlife, there's a lot of folks who like to stay out at night. So <laughs> when I was in New York, I definitely um, partook in the nightlife. So nightlife collection is inspired by creatures that, that are out at night. So mm -hmm. whether that's people or other mammals, <laughs> other mammals, or, you know, even like when I walk my dog, Izzy, we, we do a toad count every mm -hmm. evening to see, to see how our amphibious friends are doing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the nightlife pe pieces feature black diamonds. So mm -hmm. this pair of earrings has black diamond ear wire, a black diamond bead, and a tourmalated quartz briolette. And so these are brand new. These will be coming to the trunk show. The other new item that I have features a steely gray ethically sourced sapphire and recycled salt and pepper diamonds. So again, these are what some people would call imperfect, but they have inclusions that I think lend them a specific special air of intrigue. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this sapphire is ethically sourced and it's from Tanzania. Yeah, that's a gorgeous ring. It would make a beautiful, a beautiful engagement ring for some very lucky person. <laughs> or a cocktail ring. Or a cocktail ring, yeah. Or put it on to do your laundry ring, whatever, wherever you want to wear your bling. <laughs> of course. And then on Margaret's request, I also have these, I call them paisley. She calls them comma earrings with <laughs> reverse pave black diamonds. So these are set with the points out. So these are a little bit, um, a little bit high fashion and a lot of bit rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, those are some stunning earrings, show-stopping earrings. <laughs> All right, tell us about your Oceania line. Yeah, um, the Oceania line is inspired by, it's okay. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> says it differently. And as long as you like pearls, fine by me. Uh, pearls are incredible. They're the one organic, gemstone that we work with. They're grown by any mollusk. Anything that can grow a shell can grow a pearl and it's grown by an irritant getting in. So there are freshwater pearls, there are saltwater pearls, there are conch pearls, cohag pearls, any, again, anything that has a shell can create a pearl. So I have the newest piece is this lovely little Keshi freshwater pearl pendant. This is a completely natural shape. The, I love it. It's like a little heart. <laughs> it looks like a little heart. The muscle did this completely by itself. And a keshi pearl is a pearl that is the, the product of the culturing process, but it does not have a nucleus. Mm -hmm. Were we not creating cultured pearls, we wouldn't have found this. So mm -hmm. it's not considered a natural pearl, but it's a definitely a natural shape. Yeah, it's a little happy accident that happens during the process. And then I also have these lovelies, which are one of my first forays into <laughs> pearl jewelry. These pearls are from the are from Fiji. So Fiji has a completely unique ecosystem in its waters because of the volcanic activities. So you get these really unique colors of pearls. Yeah. How and many diamonds do you have there? Um, I don't remember how many, but there's definitely four carats. <laughs> so these are 18 karat white gold, EF color VS clarity diamonds. So they will sparkle no matter what. Gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see. We have a request to see my earrings again. These are, are these part of the nightlife collection? Those are, those are actually part of the natural wonders collection because they are brown diamonds and they mm -hmm. remind me of cactus. Oh yeah, <laughs> you've got so, them cut again, correct? Yeah, so those guys are kind of, um, those guys are a study. <laughs> I wanted to see how feasible doing the reverse pave was mm -hmm. and how it would look before doing the black diamond earrings. So those guys are, they're not a happy accident because they were definitely done on purpose, but they were done in preparation <laughs> for testing, for testing the limits and seeing what else I could do with that design. 
Well, your experiment was a success. <laughs> your experiment was a success. Natural cognac diamonds and 14 karat yellow gold. I believe those are 18. Ooh. Even better. <laughs> Even better. Um, I really do love the cognac colors. I like the unusual colors. I love that if you put different colors of quote unquote white diamonds together, they don't always look great because your eye expects them to all be matched. But when you put yeah. together different an unusual color, they don't have to match and they can give you a much greater effect of color. So this is another natural wonders ring. And this one falls into the natural wonders category simply, well, not simply because, but because the stone itself is a natural wonder. This is a 5.9 carat Burmese spinel. It's completely untreated. So it's not been heated in any way. And this also has the brown diamond pave details. So the Natural Wonder Collection, which is inspired by nature itself, uh, in a lot of cases, rocks and mountains, and even the stones that I use are, is, are inspirational and donates to the Envi Environmental Defense Fund. So not everything I create is as crazy as these rings, although this is pretty crazy, 12 carats more than 12 carats of orange sapphires. I also have some very affordably priced things. I really, I want jewelry and beauty and feeling good about yourself to be accessible to everybody. So the nightlife ring is under $5,000 retail. I do, I, I am extravagant, mm -hmm. I admit, but I do try to make things that are also budget conscious. These guys, are also natural wonders pieces. These start at $15 and $20 for these ocean jasper earrings and agate earrings, which Margaret, I think was showing at the beginning, but these Botswana agate earrings, none of these stones is the same. Each one is different and unique. One of my favorite things is to just buy strands of stone beads and spend time making pairs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which ones go with each other. These are all really affordable and they're sterling silver and they're hand wire wrapped. That's right. This is one of the things I, I do work with a team of jewelers to, to produce things who have a skill set that, that exceeds my own, but all of the wire wrapped earrings in the Natural Wonders collection are, are my own hands. <laughs> and in your home studio, right? And in my home studio, correct. <laughs> A labor of love. <laughs> it always is. <laughs> All right. And then um, your sixth line is Bespoke Beauties, correct? That's correct. Um, that is a, a collection of, of a catch-all collection <laughs> mm -hmm. for things that are unique, that are, that are inspired by things in my head, imaginings that I've had, something that that is unique, which is bespoke means tailor-made or mm -hmm. refers to being tailor-made, that doesn't have a specific inspiration. And I wanted to make sure that I also supported women and the Women's Center of Southeast Michigan is the cause that I support from Bespoke Beauties. As somebody who had the privilege of being able to leave an abusive situation with the assistance of my family, I understand how difficult that can be. And I understand that not everybody has the family ability or desire to help. And I wanna make sure that women specifically are supported as well. So some things just end up in that category because I wanna make sure that I'm mm -hmm. donating to that as well. Yeah, it's a worthy cause. Thank you for, for sharing a little bit about your um, experience with that. That's something that um, is pretty taboo in our society and that people don't usually want to even talk about. Un unfortunately, it is. And unfortunately, it's an all too common situation. And speaking for myself, I ended up in a situation that was uncomfortable because I didn't think it could happen to me mm -hmm. or someone like me. I thought I was I was too smart. And I thought I was it didn't happen to people like me. And unfortunately, it doesn't matter who you are, it matters who they are, and it can mm -hmm. happen to anybody. Mm -hmm. So 
um, the, the newest pieces in the Bespoke Beauties collection are a series of really sweet little necklaces and pendants. And so these guys are beautiful little trillion sapphires and folks who've seen me in the store quite a bit may have seen me wearing my little sapphire that again was a study to create these to see if it was possible and how it would work. So I have yellow gold with an orange sapphire and I have white gold with a pink sapphire. That's another really um, exquisite sapphire that you have in your collection. It's another bicolor sapphire that you really have to see in person to, to really see its true color and, and life. <laughs> I am looking at this from the behind, from the back and it's illuminated and this corner here is pink and this section here mm -hmm. is purple, is, excuse me, orange. And I'm just a sucker for these unique little stones and I feel like other people aren't gonna give them the proper home that they deserve. <laughs> <laughs> um, this little tourmaline is, um, this one is an, another happy accident. I tried to set it. It was a watermelon tourmaline and I broke it. Mm. And not to waste anything, I, I had it refaceted. And so it's got the white at the top and the green at the bottom, which is really, which is really sweet. And then I also have a tiny little Alexandrite, which is ethically sourced. And the newest one is this little ametrine. And so again, mm -hmm. all the unique stones that are mm -hmm. really unexpected. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. You. you definitely have an eye for stones. Um, where are some of the places that you find all these unique stones? So I have some, I have several trusted sources. When I was in New York and I worked for businesses that were, that were doing trade shows, I certainly frequented trade shows and other people's offices. I like working with people who I know personally, mm -hmm. people whose ethics and personalities are, are simpatico with my own and with my own vision and, and what I'd like for my, for my company and for my business. So I do support independent uh, stone, I guess you could call them stone dealers, independent stone cutters. I work with a team in Sweden who works directly with the miners in a variety mm -hmm. of different locations, either directly buying the stones and cutting them themselves, or in some cases, even helping to support the miners in purchasing the mines from, from the owners who aren't necessarily mm -hmm. as like-minded. And then I also have a lovely gentleman in New York, New York. his name is Emil. Um, <laughs> Abra works with him as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we established a relationship when I worked in New York and he got a sense for what kind of stones I like and he likes to save little special <laughs> stones for me. And mm -hmm. says, I know you know you, I know you like to know where they came from and this one's from Madagascar <laughs> and this one's from Sri Lanka. Um, but knowing, knowing that in in making my decisions and my purchases i'm supporting people real people mm -hmm. and 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 supporting people who support the miners and and the folk um a lot of the pearls i i source from a gentleman who also is a is a contact for folks who send find pearls naturally and send them up to him mm -hmm. in new york and I will have a lovely selection of conch pearls. If you've never seen a conch pearl, <laughs> you should definitely come. And just, just to see them, they're amazing. And mm -hmm. a selection of those that I haven't yet. I, I outstrip myself in, in purchasing materials to work with <laughs> <laughs> than in making things. So mm -hmm. I definitely have a lot of loose stones and unset pearls and stones that, that you're welcome to come and take a look at and maybe you will inspire me to design something else around those. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if anyone is interested in doing that or coming in and seeing um, any of these RTV2 pieces in person, and there's many more too that we didn't show this evening, um, please join us for the Arte Vita Trunk Show, October 1st through 3rd. It's in store at Abracadabra. 
um, and please reach out to us to make an appointment. Um, we're doing it by appointment to keep our numbers kind of low and you know keep everyone safe. We can also help you via Instagram, phone, email. We can help you in a number of different ways remotely if you'd rather not come on, come in, or if you're not in the Michigan area. And tell us once again um, about the donations, the special donations for the trunk show, Victoria. I will be making double charitable contributions. So twice as much as I would normally contribute for a sale for mm -hmm. each item that's purchased either in person at the trunk show or virtually through the end of the day, October 5th. So okay. I know some folks are busy over the weekend. Some mm -hmm. folks may want to see them in person and make a decision after the fact. So mm -hmm. anything purchased, any Arte Vita item purchased by the end of the day, October 5th, I will make those that double contribution. And can you um, sum up first again, the, the six different organizations that your company contributes to? So the six organizations that I contribute to are the Honey Bee Conservancy, mm -hmm. Butterfly Conservation, the Environmental Defense Fund, the Ocean Cleanup, Bat Conservation International, and the, the Women's Center of Southeast Michigan. All very worthy causes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for joining us, Victoria, and thank you for, for hanging out in with us during our um, technical difficulties. <laughs> and thanks to you, Abra audience. If you have any questions about anything that we talked about this evening, you can reach out to us on Instagram. You can call us. You can email us. If you missed any part of this video, um, it will be posted on our Instagram as well as our YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Victoria. Thank you, Margaret. Bye,